In this mini video, we're going to introduce JavaScript, one of the core technologies of the World Wide Web and the key to making your web pages interactive. JavaScript is a multi-paradigm language. It supports traditional imperative programming, but it's also event-driven. The flow of the program can be determined by user actions such as mouse clicks or key presses. It's also a functional language in that functions themselves can be assigned to variables and that functions themselves can be passed as the arguments to other functions. We're going to use it to implement client-side web page behavior that's executed in a web browser as opposed to on a server as you would for languages like PHP. In particular, we're going to use JavaScript to dynamically change the content of the web page, adding, removing elements, changing them, updating styles, all very exciting stuff. To give you a first demonstration of how JavaScript works, I've prepared a very simple web page here. I'd like to introduce you to my family's dog, Ruby. So the first thing I want to do is actually add a little picture of Ruby to the site. Oh, what a cutie. Now, I'd like to make the page a little bit more personal. Instead of saying, hello world, I'd like to say, hello, whatever your name is. What I'd like is for the web page to prompt the user for their name. And after we receive it, we display that name on the web page. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some script tags to the bottom of the page where I'm going to add this JavaScript. I'm going to declare a variable name where I'm going to store this string that the user is eventually going to give me. And then I'm going to use JavaScript's prompt window to obtain this information from the user. So let's give it a go. So you can see that the prompt window appears. I enter in my name, but of course, we're not really doing anything with the value at the moment. So what I want to do is quickly make sure that the name I entered is being stored to this variable. And one way to do this is to write the value of name into the console of the browser, which we typically use for debugging purposes. In Chrome, we can access the console by pressing F12, then selecting console, and quickly do some checks to make sure the values we're entering into the prompt are being stored to this variable. Now, before I do anything with it, I'm going to be very polite and thank the user for their inputs using JavaScript's alert window, concatenating the name they provide with another string. My goal is to say hello name in the header of the page. So to do this, I'm going to replace the word world with a span element that initially has no content, but will be updated by JavaScript later. And to achieve this, we need to give it a unique ID that JavaScript is able to reference. Now we're going to use one of the most important methods of JavaScript, get element by ID, to identify that span element. And then we're going to use the inner HTML property to update the content of the element. So I've entered my name and now you can see it's displayed where this formerly empty span element was. Now I'm sure you'll agree that one dog is never enough. So I'm going to prompt the user now to ask them how many dogs they want. And I'm going to store this number in another variable called num repeats. So my rough idea is to take the HTML code for this image and store it as a string in a variable called dog code. And later we're going to repeat this over and over again according to how many times the user wants. Back in the original code, I'm just going to have a blank paragraph with the ID dog situation so that JavaScript can find it later and update its contents. In fact, let's do that right now. We're going to add the get element by ID method again, but this time for dog situation and insert the contents of the variable dog code. Of course, before we go ahead and test this, we should actually make sure that this string is repeated the number of times that the user wants. To do this, I'm going to update dog code after applying a relevant string method to what I've previously stored in it. And you'll see that when I press the dot button here, VS Code actually suggests a number of string methods that I can take advantage of. And one of them is called repeat. If I go to W3Schools, I can see many more details about how these different string methods operate. 
For this method, I just have to specify how many times, so I simply pass the value stored in the num repeats variable. And that's all my coding done. It's time to give it a test. That's all very cute, but maybe the images are a little too close together, so I'm going to add a CSS rule to make sure that they have some padding. And you'll see that this rule is still applied, even though that this HTML code is added by JavaScript. Whee! And that's all for this video. We introduced JavaScript, a multi-paradigm programming language. It's imperative, event-driven, functional, object-oriented. We can use it to make web pages more interactive by dynamically updating the HTML elements. We can place our JavaScript code inside a script element and it's executed by the browser. We can use the far keyword to declare variables and we saw how we can assign to them and even manipulate them. We saw how we could write something to the console of a browser for debugging purposes. We looked at prompt and alert windows. Uh, we looked up one of the many string methods to repeat a string I'd previously assigned. And then finally, we looked at how we could update an HTML element by looking it up by ID and manipulating its content. See you next time.